This is Heresy, the miniature wargaming talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking all about how to use your Solar Auxiliar Infantry in games of Legions Imperialis. We're going to be talking about the basics of using infantry, and then we're going to go through all the options for the Auxiliar Last Rifle Tertia with its upgrade units, whether you should use these as tactical or support attachments, and also some suggested configurations to run in your list for your infantry detachments as well. But before we do that, if you enjoy the show, please do like and subscribe. Drop me a comment down below during the video if there's anything you'd like to talk about. And don't forget to join us on Discord as well, the link to which is in the video description below. And now, on with the show. Let's quickly go over the basics of infantry, quick refresher. So, infantry have the highest tactical strength in the game for holding objectives, even higher when you're Solar Auxilia, which we'll talk about in a minute. Infantry aren't even that slow, really, compared to other units, so they get to go triple speed when they march, which is fantastic. They're very cheap per hit point, and no matter whether you buy expensive infantry or cheap infantry, they're still way cheaper than things like tanks for every hit point they've got. They're really tough when they're in buildings, especially for their points as well, because they get that cover save. They're really good in cover with the minus one to hit as well. They do die easily in the open, but that assumes your opponent's got enough shots to kill them all as well. And they do have a very short range offensive output, but their offensive output's actually really high for their points cost, especially when they're shooting against other infantry as well. And they give you lots of bodies for having fights, particularly in Solar Auxilia. Now, naturally, these are going to get compared to Marine Infantry stats, so let's have a look at that. They've got a lower save on average. Everything's got a 6 plus save, so that means they take 25% more incoming damage than the equivalent Marine stand with 0 AP, which most uh, weapons shooting at infantry will have in general. They've only got a 4 plus morale, which is quite a big difference. So even with their command unit nearby, they've generally only going to have a, a 3 plus as well. So that means they do run a little bit easier as well. The chain of command ability is on quite a lot of these infantry stands, although not all of them. This does mean that they're a bit harder to spread out into multiple objectives because they don't get to march. So whereas Marines get to like march a bunch of assault Marines around the board and jump where they want, going 21 inches at a time, it's not as easy to do that with Solar Auxilia just because they can't march when they're out of chain of command range. Also as well, when they are in those buildings or those cover where you just want them to hunker down, where you just want them to first fire, they can't do that either when they're out of chain of command range. So it's a little bit of a disadvantage, although not a huge one a lot of the time because you can always still advance which is an order that you will use quite a lot. And I think a lot of these stands get quite a big cost reduction for having Chain of Command, or the army gets a, a big cost reduction overall for having Chain of Command, and I don't actually think it's that bad. With that said, I also don't think that the infantry in Solar Auxilia are particularly cheap for these disadvantages. So whilst they do have some pretty great stands and some pretty great abilities, they're not particularly different in cost to Marines. The Marines have got, you know, most of their stats are quite a bit better. So I don't think that there's a huge difference between the two. Maybe not big enough to make up for the points differences in some cases. The other thing is that there's only the Arvus Lighter for transport options right now for Solar Auxilia. Importantly, that doesn't let them assault, and a lot of their stands want to do that. It's a flyer, which is great right now while there's not much anti-air out there, but eventually when there is... It might be a bit dangerous to be flying around the board in these little easy-to-kill flyers. And they're 12 points each, and they don't come with a gun. So unlike a Rhino, which is 10 points and does come with a really good gun for its points, these can eat up quite a lot uh, a lot of your points. So they are good transports, and they do give you a lot of flexibility, but you certainly pay for it. Let's look at the Last Rifle Tercio. So this is the main detachment the Solar Auxiliary have got for their infantry. Well... The last rifle infantry uh, tertio stands are the weakest individual stand currently in the game, and you pay 30 points for four of them, so not that cheap even compared to tactical marines, as we just mentioned. They do have 10-inch range on the last rifles, so whilst they are worse than bolters, uh, you know, because they don't get the double shot when they're in assault range, which is where tactical marines get a lot of the firepower, they are longer range than the tactical marines. And that can be pretty effective. The best thing in the game at killing infantry is other infantry. Just because of the volume of shots that you get for a cheap price. Tanks are just really bad at killing infantry in this game. Not because their individual shots won't kill them. But just because tanks are so expensive compared to an infantry stand. Even if you put heavy bolters or auto cannons on the tanks. They're just not very good at killing infantry for the point that the tank costs. 
So Las Rifle Tertios with, with Las Rifles are actually pretty good at killing other infantry, and it's just one reasonably effective way to run them. 10 inches still isn't a huge range, and you might not get to fire them all the time, but when you do, that's a pretty good way to kill enemy infantry. But the main thing that these guys with their really bad stats have got going for them is that they are line. So they've got plus two tactical strength and objectives, which is huge, and in a lot of ways is the main thing you want these guys to do, is just sit on objectives and possibly die eventually. So there's seven tactical strength each, which is just massive, and that's the real advantage these guys have got over Marines is that they're just so good at holding the objectives. They do have a low close assault factor, though. So they've got zero base, and they've got one when they're in formation, as I call it. So when they're in base-to-base -base contact with other last rifle, tertio stands, or when they're garrisoned as well, they just all count as it. Their CAF goes up to one. So it's not a very high close assault factor, but because the unit can be upgraded six times as opposed to forward marines, you can get them up to quite a lot of bodies which will help offset that lower close assault factor as well. So you'll have four more stands than a maximum size marine detachment as well. They're not bad in close assault at all. That one difference to a tactical marine stand, for example, isn't going to necessarily hugely change combats. So they're pretty good at just sitting in a building or sitting all uh, base to base and just holding an objective. The thing you've got to be careful of is because these are such big detachments, if someone demolishes the building that you're in with Demolisher or some other anti-structure anti ability, you can lose a lot of stands all at once. One of the upgrades to the detachment is Auxiliaries with Flamers, so the same points as adding Las Rifle guys, so you choose them between Las Rifles with their longer range or Flamers with their shorter range and maybe better stats, so they only get one shot. They're four plus to hit though, and they ignore cover, which is a great ability, and they're light. These are great for clearing structures. You know, if you think about it, if you had 12 stands of these guys and they walked up to a structure that had enemy units in it, you're going to get six hits. They ignore cover. The enemies are going to save. If they're Marines, they're going to lose four stands. That's really good. As firepower goes for clearing stuff out of buildings or whatever, that's really good. They're less good in Overwatch themselves, obviously because they've just got less shots than Laz Rifles. They still hit on a six and Ignore's cover is not going to help in Overwatch. So they're not as good defensively, but offensively they're really good. Getting them there is the problem. You know, if you put them in a transport of some kind, like an Arvis Lighter right now, or maybe a, 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 I forget the name of the tank, the Carnadon equivalent later on, they will be great at killing stuff in buildings, but then the cost of the unit's gone up quite a lot to get them there in the first place. They're also vulnerable to overwatch themselves, so when they're jumping out at that range to fire their flamers, marines or something like that are going to be shooting at them with quite a lot of overwatch as well. So that's also a downside to these short-range weapons. Ultimately, I think these are potentially good if you want to attack enemy infantry as an alternative to maybe fighting them out of a building or from where they are. You know, if you're just going to try and shoot them out, you can just jump these out and shoot. But again, they do suffer from that overwatch. Otherwise, you can just stick with large rifles for defense or just shoot enemy infantry from a bit farther away. And you can also mix and match these as well. If you wanted to put a few uh, units in to give you a little bit of option for shooting things out of buildings, potentially too. I kind of like these, but you know they're, they're on about the same level as the last rifles. Ultimately, it's a little bit of personal choice which one you think is going to perform better for you. But then we get on to where the real power is in the Solar Auxiliary Infantry, the Velatari. The Velatari are the same cost as Auxiliaries as an upgrade, again. They are close to self factor one base, so that will go up to two when they're base to base with other things as well. They're independent when they're in a detachment, so they get that you know six inch extra moving around ability, which I don't think is amazing today particularly, but is a nice to have. Importantly, they haven't got chain of command, so they can operate on their independent range without really uh, worrying about their orders. The big thing is they've got rend which means their average assault result is going to be 11.5 with their 3d6, or 12.5 if they're in a formation, meaning that most marine units or just any unit without rend effectively just can't beat them in a combat, assuming they're one-on-one, -on -one. and even if they're two-on-one, -on -one, they're on fairly evens on the second fight as well. Rend is just a crazy ability. You know, It just makes things far too much better in combat. It's the equivalent of having three and a half extra assault factor it's just huge, basically. And the thing I don't like about it is it makes the fight sort of a foregone conclusion. 
you know, when two units fight with the same ish close assault factor and one of them's got rend and one hasn't, the one with rend basically just wins most of the time. All that said, I don't think this unit's particularly imbalanced. There's been a lot of uh, upset people on the internet talking about how these are just so much better than assault marines. There's no great way to deliver these. There's, there's good ways to deliver them, but there's no, you know, there's nothing like a Thunderhawk gunship where they're going to drop out and immediately charge into combat anywhere on the battlefield. They have got a six plus save. They are super vulnerable to Overwatch as well, and they don't have a gun themselves. I think the main problem with them is, and they are very good, don't get me wrong, I don't think they're, they're broken, they're very good, is it just doesn't feel that fun to know that if they get into combat, you're going to lose. You know, there's no there's no dice rolling. It's almost deterministic rather than rolling dice, which is, you know, ultimately what these games are all about. Even if they charge against tactical marines in buildings, they're, you know, they've got good chances if they're base to base of winning the fight. They're still odds on to win. Whereas normally you would be looking at specialists to get things out of buildings. These just win the fight with no extra abilities. So they are very good. They're very strong. And if you're a solar auxiliary player, you definitely want to take them. Um, although, you know, for me personally, I don't really like the way the unit's being put together rules wise. And then we have a slightly more melee focused stand in the Karanite Ogren. So these are an extra one and a half points of stand, 25% more expensive than the other auxiliary stand, or a little bit more expensive than that again when you take them as support. So these have got a base of self, close self factor of three, and they've got Furious Charge as well. So when they charge, the close assault factors going up to five. They've also got that independent. They also lose chain of command and a detachment as well. And they've also got rend. So they don't have any gun, which is not much different to the Velatari with their six inch range pistols, really. These guys also, by the way, the rules are written, get the formation bonus as well, which seems like an oversight. But if you look at the numbers that are on the screen there, you can see that these guys are pretty bonkers if they charge. They're still bonkers if they don't charge. You know, they've still got four close assault factor and, and rend, which means they beat Terminators in combat very easily. Most of the time when you're fighting these, it's not even worth rolling your dice. And there's even plenty of knights and even titans that will just lose a combat to a single charge and stand of Ogrins. That's how sort of silly that the rend and all these things stacking up together is. These guys are also not bulky somehow, so... If you do want to transport them, it's very easy to do. Future transports will be very easy to transport them as well. That's probably an oversight and needs fixing. I've failed to see how that is not an oversight. Again, I don't think the unit is that imbalanced because they're a bit more expensive than normal troops and they've still only got a 6 plus save, but it's definitely not far off. Uh, and I think maybe when I play against these a little bit more, I might change my mind and just say that these are broken. Um, I'm just trying to not be... Uh, not be overly uh, skies fallen at this point. I do think that these guys are a little bit interchangeable with the Velatari as well. Now, as amazing as these are in combat, if you think things are going to maybe not get the charge or be a bit more defensive, you might want the Velatari instead, just so you've got that line ability for the extra, extra tactical strength or shape a few points off your list maybe. So I think you can choose either of those. But I do think from a combat perspective, numbers... These guys are pretty much virgin on the broken level. And I would go so far as to make this point, and I might make this point in a lot of videos in the future. I think that Rend, the way it was written, is a big mistake. I think it's probably the biggest rules mistake in the game right now. I really think it needs to be changed for the health of the game, for the fun of the game, all this kind of stuff, just for the design space going forward. You know, every unit that doesn't have rend, even if it's a combat-focused unit. You know, a Space Marine Command unit, Terminators with the four close assault are worse than a single stand of Imperial Guard with power axes. That's just not right. What Ren probably could have done is let you re-roll one of your combat dice, which would still be absolutely incredible, and you wouldn't even have to change the points of these units. They would still be great with their ability. It'd really change their ability to win combats. But it would mean you can put Rend on more things in future rather than everything with Rend just being an auto win in combat. So I really hope this gets fixed. I really hope someone looks at it and says, yeah, maybe we didn't test that well enough. Let's FAQ it. Will it happen? No in Games Workshop? Probably not. And I guess we might have to deal with it for a while. But it would be nice if it was fixed. 
So looking at these upgrade units then, when should you take the things you want like Ogrins or Velatari as a detachment upgrade versus a support detachment? Well, everything's cheaper when it's a tertio upgrade. So it is a bit more restricted in use by being tied to the tertio. You've got those Laz rifle stands there as well. If you're putting them in a transport, it means that they have to go with the Laz rifle stands, which means you've got to buy more transports to transport those worse units. But it does mean that you get ablative of bodies and you can put more units in one place as well. So these uh, units can be can be pretty big, so up to 16 stands altogether. And if you do want some ablative of wounds for your Ogrens or your Velatari, getting them from the Laz Rifles is good. The units are a lot smaller when taken as support attachments and more expensive. And with how fragile they are, even though they're still really good, because the units are just great because of that rend and because of their, put, their, their pure numbers that they've got on them. I do think they're superior when taken as a unit with a few last rifles in them as well. The other small difference is that when you take Velatari as a support detachment, they're only steadfast, not line, which means the tactical strength only goes up by one, not two. So it's a small change, but it is a change. And obviously, if you take them in that uh, as a detachment upgrade, it means they're a little bit better. So answering the big question then, what auxiliar tertio configurations should you run? Well, I think the first one that is completely legit is just maxing out on lash rifles or, you know, just taking a lot of lash rifles, maybe near maxed out. Gives you a huge body count for tactical strength. Gives you a reasonable amount of close assault as well, just by virtue of the sheer number of bodies you've got. Difficult for opponents to take off the table without blast or template weapons as well. Just because of the number of bodies you've got, even if they're easy to kill, but particularly if you get them in cover or manage one to hit, it's just very hard for your opponent to shoot them all off, I think. Again, you've got to be careful of Demolish it if you are in a building or something like that, but they also put out a lot of shots. And if you have got one of these large units of last rifles, your opponent really doesn't want to get within 10 inches, particularly if it's not Overwatch, because these can put out a lot of shots and make short work of enemy infantry. The other way to do it is the minimum size units. I think these are great. Because they've got line on them, your opponent, if they didn't fight them, would need 56 unit strength <laughs> to take an objective off of four solar auxiliar lash rifle stands. So you need du you need double to take something. So they are just such high unit strength, it's crazy. 12 infantry stands of marines to take an objective. So they've got to come and kill you. They probably can when you're only four, but if they, it stops them just moving a bunch of stuff up to take an objective, which is a really good thing to be able to do. I also think for objective holding, just a small detachment with just a couple of Velatari or Ogren upgrades is pretty good as well. Just because of the sheer numbers on those assault troops with their rend, it means that if you've got you know one of these small detachments, you know maybe six, eight stands total, some of them are these assault guys camping in a building, they've got that high unit strength but your opponent has got to shoot them out or commit a real assault force to them. Because if they just get assaulted by like a bunch of tactical marines or even assault marines, the Ogren and Velatari, especially defensively, especially if they're in a structure, will just clear multiple opposing stands each. They basically become borderline impossible for your opponent to assault with a similar sized or points cost force. So your opponent's then got to shoot them out. And if they've got lots of bodies on the table to deal with, it's not that easy, even if this is just four to six sort of extra stands of assault troops. And then, of course, the other way you're going to run it, which I think you're going to see a lot, is just four LAS rifle stands with four, five, or six Velatari or Ogren upgrades, just a load of those assault troops in one place. It's cheaper to get them all in one place than if you buy them as support. You've got them LAS rifles as some ablative wounds. The Velatari align as well, so they, they're also high unit strength. There's just no way something this big can be assaulted out of a building or even just assaulted in general. No marine detachment gets big enough or has high enough close assault factor to assault this. It just doesn't exist in the game. There's absolutely no way to assault this. You would have to shoot it first. Even if you shot it first and reduced it to half strength, a maximum size marine detachment including assault marines even if they were world eaters with their extra bonuses, would almost certainly still lose in combat to these guys. The numbers just are bonkers. So this is going to be probably the main way you're going to run Auxilia Tertios, I think. And if you run it in a Pioneer company, much like using Raven Guard or Alpha Legion in Space Marines, it means you also get to infiltrate them, which means you can start them 
on those objectives, which is just absolutely crazy. Now, if you are going to run support detachments or where you have to run support detachments in some cases, I don't think any of these are super attractive because they, they go up in cost. The Velatari get a bit worse. The Ogrens you know, are quite a bit more expensive at 50 points for four. I think they're much better when you run them in the tear shows. But if you do have to run them as support units for mandatory stuff, I think I like the Velatari better, probably. You just take them as a minimum size unit, stick it in a building somewhere, just use it as an objective holder or a screen, something like that, just to keep the costs down. I think if you're playing Pioneer Company, though, you can run Velatari or Ogrins to your heart's content because you've solved that problem of getting them up the field. These would also be reasonably decent to put in Arvis Lighters as well. So if you've just got a small support detachment, just, you know, a couple of Arvis Lighters, giving them that transport, and it means they can grab a backfield objective. And again, as I keep repeating, a few units of Marines or something like that, you know, holding an objective or maybe just camping in cover and providing fire support with missile launchers, something like that. Just a few of these Ogrins or Velatari will decimate those units as well. So it means you don't have to buy many Arvis Lighters to transport a smaller unit that can do those sort of commando runs. And that's the end of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's given you some things to think about. There's a, an awful lot to think about with these Velatari detachments and the way you can use them. And they're obviously going to change quite a lot as new units are released. But there should be enough here to keep you going in the meantime. If you have enjoyed the show, please do like and subscribe. Drop me a comment down below if you've got any. And don't forget to join us on Discord as well, which is linked in the video description below. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.